Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide The nerve impulse begins on page 9.18 of your study guide. In order to understand the nerve impulse, we need a little background information. Let's turn back to page 3.27 in the study guide. This is the chapter over the cell. This is a cell, any old cell, not just a nerve cell. If we look at a cell, we discover that there's an uneven distribution of ions inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, and in the outside uh, surrounding extracellular fluid. Inside the cell are many negative and positive ions. For example, protein, which tends to be negatively charged, is abundant inside the cell, not so abundant outside, mainly because protein can't get through the membrane very well. Essentially, we'll disregard protein in this discussion. Chloride, on the other hand, a negative ion is less abundant inside the cell, but there's more of it in the surrounding extracellular fluid. A lot of positive ions exist. Potassium. Potassium is more abundant inside the cell than it is outside. Sodium is just the reverse, more abundant on the outside than on the inside. Now the net result is that there's a slight excess of negative charges in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now these charges tend to congregate on the membrane. So on the inside of the membrane there's a slight excess of negative charges and on the outside a slight excess of positive charges. Now remember, anything that has opposite ends or opposite sides is polar, like a magnet or the earth. So this membrane is polar, negative on one side and positive on the other. Also remember that ions can be transported across the membrane, to the inside or to the outside. Now these arrows represent the degree of permeability of the cell membrane to ions. In general, the membrane is more permeable to chloride and potassium ions and less permeable to sodium ions. Notice that the ions are transported in both directions, in and out of the cell. Now the question is, why in a live resting cell does this uneven distribution of ions exist? Well, remember the concentration gradient, which means a difference in concentration. A concentration gradient is like a force. Take chloride, for example. There's less on the inside, more on the outside. Is there a concentration gradient? Yes. The concentration gradient, more outside the cell, less inside. In which direction would the concentration gradient tend to force chloride to move? Well, the net movement is from high to low into the cell. Likewise, potassium. There's more inside the cell than outside, and so the difference, a concentration gradient, tends to cause a net movement of potassium out. With sodium, same situation. More on the outside, less on the inside, and the concentration gradient tends to form, force sodium into the cell. But, with ions, there's another force at work. Remember, unlike charges attract, and like charges repel. We said the outside of the cell is slightly positive, the inside is slightly negative, chloride ions are negative. What would the positive exterior do to the negative chloride ions? It would tend to draw them out. It would tend to attract them. Likewise, the negative interior would tend to repel chloride outward. This difference in charges acting on the chloride ions is an electrical gradient. Now don't be confused when we refer to uh, something electrical. It doesn't mean electricity necessarily. It can mean any movement of ions or anything related to ions. Notice potassium. Potassium is a positive ion. 
The positive exterior repels potassium, the negative interior attracts potassium, and so the electrical gradient causes potassium to move in. However, what about sodium? Well, sodium is positive, yet there's less sodium inside, more on the outside. The concentration gradient causes sodium to move in, and the electrical gradient would cause sodium to move in, the negative interior attracting the positive sodium. And yet, in a live, resting cell, the movement of sodium in and out is equal. So, if both gradients, concentration and electrical gradient, cause sodium to move in, what is it that's causing sodium to move out? That is, for every sodium that moves in, one moves back out. Well, the answer is the sodium pump. So, the sodium pump is at work in the live cell, pumping sodium out, and when the cell is at rest, the movement out is equal to the movement in. In our discussion about the nerve impulse, we can basically disregard the sodium pump. It's going on constantly. Instead, what we'll look at is permeability of the membrane to the various ions. We could say, for example, that permeability controls the whole thing. 